Another mega Pokemon. Yep. And that's such a huge advantage. You know, if you're playing and you have three restricted Pokemon or two mega Pokemon, you have an upper hand. Yep, definitely. And just to give you guys a quick rundown on Jake's team, he's running Kangaskhan, Kyogre, Bronzong, Salamence, Thunderous, and Groudon. So, dual primals versus Groudon Xerneas, the classic matchup. Oh. Who do you think takes this? I mean, what's your... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it comes down to how other players play, right? But I think the first thing I have to notice is that Jake is actually not running Cresselia. Instead, he's running Bronzong. And Bronzong, you love to have against this kind of team. Oh, no, especially against the Xerneas, right? With the Against the Xerneas, against the Salamence. Kangaskhan can't do very much. And Smeargle, if you have a Lumberry, it can take up that and just set up Trick Room or maybe go from there. So there's a lot of good tools, and it's, uh, you know, we saw Aaron Trailer's Bronzong earlier on, how much that could help. So I think this Bronzong is going to be key for Jake. Uh, you know, obviously Kyogre and Groudon both really helpful, but Kyogre, Kyogre typically tends to be even more helpful because of his ability to one-hit KO Groudon. Yes, I agree with you, Aaron. That's, uh, I love your insight. I love your insight. That's why I'm here, man. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to go ahead and jump to the screen now. Both players are ready to send out their Pokemon. Kangaskhan and Groudon out now for Jake as Andy goes Go, went ahead and led with Groudon and Salamence. The Intimidate's going to be huge on that Kangaskhan, maybe on that ground, depending on how Jake's Groudon is, as we do see the Groudons go ahead and revert back to the Primal Forms. Yeah, it actually looks like both players are 6-0, and oh, so we do have to correct ourselves on that, Means, meaning uh, whoever wins this will advance the day two, so this is a lot on the line right now. Yeah, this is, oh boy. <laughs> and so we see the double intim or the single Intimidate, but uh, Jake's Groudon looks like it's going to go before Andy's Groudon. Right, and again, that could be a speed tie. We don't know exactly know. Yep. Uh, in this situation, you kind of want to be the one to have the second primal reversion mm -hmm. because then you know. You know, right. <laughs> so if you're running max speed, then you're like, okay, they're going to be max speed. They're speed tie. Right, and if, if you're, you're not, not max speed, then hey, he's probably faster, right? Right, right. <laughs> uh, but I do want to say that that Salamence is a big deal because it gets the Intimidate off Kangaskhan and Groudon. You, you love leading Salamence. Like, when you consider when to bring Salamence, these are the two Pokemon you want to see because if it's like Kangaskhan Xerneas, then you can fake out Geomancy and Salamence. Obviously, doesn't fare too well against Xerneas once it's on the field because it's so weak to it. But here, Salamence gets the Intimidate, which is so big against both of these physical type Pokemon. Of course, Groudon could rely on special type attacks as well, but Salamence is looking like uh, you know it's in a pretty good position, and uh, the Groudon uh, on Jake's end, his you know, the Precipice Blade's damage is reduced if he's choosing to carry it, and he's meanwhile still at full power. So Kangaskhan does have some fake out and power up punch pressure, but, you know, the offense in general is what Salamence and Groudon looks really good. No, I agree. We do see Groudon on Jake's side now going to switch out, going to go straight into Bronzong. Fairly safe, depending on what that uh, Groudon decides to do here. Maybe went for a surprise fire punch. We do see Andy now going to go ahead and Mega Evolve the Salamence here. Not going to want to save that uh, Intimidate for utility later on, as we do see Kangaskhan now also go Mega. I'm not going to want to keep that in your focus at all. Maybe it's Scrappy, maybe it's Early Bird. Mm -hmm. Don't exactly know just yet, yep. but wants to get that extra hit in right now. I have lost before because I haven't made it all my canes gone. <laughs> you so. have to be careful. You always have to double check that. <laughs> we do see the fake out land onto the ground on here. That ground is going to be able to flinch. So very safe switch right now from that Bronzong. Uh, Salamence now goes for the Hyper Voice. Not going to do that much damage to that Bronzong at all. As Kangaskhan hangs on, as Groudon is not going to be able to move. Yeah, I mean, I think Jake did exactly uh, probably the best play he could have in order to avoid the most damage being done. Whenever you have a suboptimal lead matchup such as that, you have to try to play out of it by making a clever switch or a protect play. Bronzong, pretty optimal Pokemon here to have in against the Salamence. Not very good against Groudon, but of course, Jake does have the Kyogre option. So one move that Jake can opt for is switching Kangaskhan into Kyogre, meaning that Bronzong won't be affected by fire type attacks. Of course, Andy can see right through that and just double edge press his blades that Kangaskhan slot, which I think is actually a really solid option right now for him. But Trick Room is obviously an imminent threat from Bronzong. And if Trick Room goes up with Kyogre out, that could be really bad. So Jake might want to consider sacrificing his Kangaskhan and setting up Trick Room here. But then it's also risky because it's like, is he going to go for the fire type attack right. or the press his blades? Right. It's always a tough call. As we do see Kangaskhan switch now, is it going to go back into the Kyogre? It does. Going to try to avoid any fire type attack onto this Bronzong slot here and try to get up that Trick Room that he wants up so desperately. Yeah. But now the question is, are we going to see the double edge press Miss Blades? Because if that comes out, then you lose Kyogre, and that's such a helpful tool. Right. It becomes, is it worth it to get that Trick Room up? Right. Uh, we do see the Primordial Seed take over the harsh sunlight, and that is going to be huge. As Salmon does go for a double edge here, going to go ahead and target down that Kyogre slot, going to bring it down to about 40% oh, so right there. Huge, huge damage from that Salamence. As well as for a Thunder Wave. Okay. Oh, Thunder Wave for his own Salamence. What? He did what? <laughs> Dude, that didn't just happen. Oh, Andy going for the plays right here. Huge paralysis right there on his own Salamence. First off, Thunder Wave Groudon. Second off, he hit his own Salamence. Yeah, yeah. Third of all, what? <laughs> 
let's just talk about that real quick. For those that are confused on why he thundered with his own Salamence, and he was predicting the Trick Room on Bronzong. So now that Salamence is paralyzed, it's actually the slowest Pokemon on the field. On your Trick Room, that means it's going to be operating first. That's a big deal because now you can double edge into like Hyogre. That was a very clever move. The only risk in thunder waving your own Pokemon is that now there's a 25% chance you won't be able to attack through. We do see the Groundhog switch out. I'm actually speechless as we see Dill come in to transform into Kyogre. Huge transform right there. As we see another Kyogre hit the field, he's going to get three restricted Pokemon in this game, possibly. As we do see Jake protect the Kyogre as Bronzong goes for a Hypnosis Ooh. outside of gravity. Gutsy call right there. It does connect onto that Kyogre that was the Ditto, that was the Groudon. <laughs> <laughs> as Salamence goes for double edge into the Protect, and now Bronzong can easily just go ahead and try... Oh, well, he can't. That actually also blocks Sleep. Yep, so that's uh, why it's, it's such a clever move. That's actually one of the you know, smartest moves I've seen. One that most players probably would not consider. Playing with fire, though. Definitely playing... Well, electricity, yes. I guess. <laughs> but you have to be careful about the full paralysis. The 25% chance can easily ruin it, but uh, that was a gutsy hypnosis from Jake Sam, but I like it a lot because Bronzong's still protected by Kyogre. Groudon cannot use fire type attacks. Bronzong most likely has levitate, so it won't be affected by ground type attacks, so it's really well protected. You know, even if you miss a hypnosis, Trick Room is still up, so you can continue using it. I also want to commend Andy, though, because I thought that Kyogre switch was really smart. If you don't expect hypnosis, uh, you know, suddenly now you can potentially pick up a double knockout. Okay, Groudon's coming back in now. Yeah, and we do see Groudon switch back in. Gonna bring out the sunlight again. Jake is trying to keep the weather the way he wants. It doesn't exactly want to lose this weather battle that we always see so common. As we do see the Jarrah connect on the south, <laughs> but the paralysis makes it do little damage in that So paralysis. little! Ah, that paralysis is great! As we do see the double edge connect on the Groudon, gonna do about 50% as Ditto continues to nap, as is this Kyogre. Oh man, what is happening right now, Aaron? This is, this is amazing. I honestly, like, this is such clever play. Shout out to Andy because I don't think I've ever really seen anyone take advantage of that. The Salamence is putting in so much work, and you see how much pressure it's putting on Jake. These double edges are actually two hit knockouts. Like, Grano may be able to take another one depending on how the damage rolls are, but like you said, that paralysis was clever because now it's faster under Trick Room, but it also prevents hypnosis and Gyro Ball's damage was reduced. So it was actually almost a perfect move if you're expecting the Trick Room, but, uh, you know, if Trick Room didn't go up there, it would have been really bad for Andy. You know, usually when my Salamence gets paralyzed in this format, I actually think I actually think <laughs> that it's just a knocked out Pokemon right, right off the bat, right. right? But now Andy is actually using this to his advantage by doing it himself. And Kang Scott now gonna switch in for the ground on here. And Jake is just trying to shuffle his Pokemon around, trying to right. keep up right now because that Trick Room actually hurt him. Now Bronzong gonna go for another Gyro Ball here, gonna connect onto that Salamence, not gonna be it able to pick up the so KO. so little. But there it is, there it is. The payoff right there for Jake is that the Salamence is fully paralyzed. Right, and I think if you're Andy, you have to be expecting at least one of those, right? You've been pretty fortunate to connect through so far through your paralysis, but I think if you're Andy, you're still pretty content. I mean, the Ditto is asleep, which is a little bit unfortunate, but the thing is, Gyro Ball is doing nothing right now. That Salamence has gotten intimidated off against Bronzong and is paralyzed, so its speed is so, so much more reduced. And Kangaskhan here, of course, can target one of the two Pokemon, but Gyro Ball won't be able to pick up the knockout on Salmon, so if uh, the Ditto wakes up, he could potentially get a water spout off. But as we see here, uh, Jake actually doesn't want any water type attacks to happen. Right, but now Andy is in position to pick up some KOs here. Uh, fake out support is going to be huge, but I don't know. This Andy's playing extremely well. Kangaskhan now going to go for the fake out. Who is it going to target down? Going to target down the Salmon. going to make it flinch. Uh, probably thinking that's the safest play. That probably is as we do see Salamence not be able to move again as Ditto continues to sleep. That is a very long sleep, and now it should be waking up. Yep, that is a three-turn sleep as Trick Room expires. So here's a really interesting thing. Uh, depending on the Ditto's item, you could actually withdraw Salamence into Kyogre and just you know launch a Water Spout and an Origin Pulse, and that's a big deal. So, yeah, this has been a really interesting start to the game so far. I think Andy obviously played that phenomenal. You'd imagine if he got that double watch off against Kangaskhan, it would have maybe just be over because, you know, Kangaskhan's such a big threat. Uh, it's the healthiest member of the team other than the Bronzong. The Bronzong's not doing very much with Gyro Ball since uh, Salamence is paralyzed. Ditto's a Kyogre right now. We've got a Kyogre in the back as well. Yeah, and Ditto's... Or sorry, not a Kyogre in the back of Andy's team, but he's still got Groudon, which he can obviously use to uh, pressure. Right. Uh, Ditto is known to carry Choice Scarves. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the odd red card. Ditto does wake up, goes for a Protect here. Is that... You think that's red card? 
I don't, I don't know. know what item is. Oh, Quick Claw as, as well. Quick Claw is also quick claw. a popular Yeah, item. yeah. <laughs> we do see Ground now go for the Fire Punch. Going to connect onto that Salamence here. Picks up the KO. Salamence finally gets knocked out after being paralyzed on the field for five whole turns. Yeah, and I do want to quickly apologize. For some reason, I thought Andy had a Kyogre in the back. Obviously, <laughs> that wasn't an option. So, uh, you know, obviously, he couldn't just switch into Kyogre and go for a Water-type attack. So, I do have to apologize for that. But uh, this does give Andy the position to now switch into his Groudon, and that's free to press his blades. But like we noted, uh, Jake's Groudon moved before Andy's Groudon. On, and that could be a big deal because if uh, Jake wins some speed ties here, you know, you'd imagine that'd be really scary. Even not even a speed type, he just outspeeds. You can double up on Groudon, double edge press his blades. Ditto can't use any water type attacks right now. So the Kyogre are Yeah, that's right. Even even if a Groudon, like, even if Andy is able to knock out the other Groudon, his Groudon is still on the field. So right, exactly. Ice Beam, Ice Beam it is, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a crazy battle we've seen so far. And I think the craziest thing is that Jake looks like he's still in a very good position despite Andy playing so smartly to yeah. deal with that uh, trick room. Pokemon, what a great game. We do see Andy now switch out the Ditto. Gonna try to reset it to another Pokemon. We do see Xerneas come out here. Uh, obviously, Kyogre in the Sun not as threatening as he really wants it to be. Xerneas now gonna exert the Fairy Aura as Kangaskhan goes for a return right here. Targeting down that Groudon, gonna do a decent amount of damage, but that physical bulk from Groudon makes it survive with 50% of its hit points remaining as Groudon on Jake's side now goes for the Press of Slave. Gonna connect onto that Groudon. Yeah, Xerneas gonna take 50% there, and Jake is still looking good. It's pretty amazing because it looked like Andy had full control over the match, and now he's just overwhelming Andy with his speed, right? Groudon being faster there was a big deal. Ditto is going to come back in here, so Ditto has a Choice Scarf item. That could be interesting. It could still carry that Choice Scarf, you're right. Uh, we've only seen it protect and then switch. Right. Uh, obviously, it's not... I mean, Kyogre probably just had protect and Andy now. Mm -hmm. Maybe playing some mind games. Maybe he's trying to hide the Scarf. Right. The scary thing is, of course, there's uh, Kyogre and Bronzong in the back, so if you use a Fire-type attack, Kyogre can just shut that down, but we see the Xerneas go for a Protect here. And Kangaskhan goes for a return here into that, uh, into the Xerneas Protect as we see Groudon go for... Oh, Groudon, but on Jake's, uh, Groudon on Jake's side went for the Press Blitz Blades, avoids it, and now Groudon on Andy's side gonna go for the Press Blitz picks up the double KO, huge double knockout with the critical hit on the Kangaskhan, and now it's gonna be Kyogre and Bronzong versus Xerneas and Groudon. I think if I'm Jake, though, I still love switching Kyogre and Bronzong into this position. Oh, no, for sure. All I have to do is protect Trick Room skill swap. We're not even skill swapping. Just Gyro Ball and just go for a water attack. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, after you get the Trick Room up, so because your Kyogre obviously is taking damage at this point. So, right, right, uh, right. This is actually one of my favorite setups, and it's, uh, you know, it looks really bad at first, but then it's like, well, now you have weather control. Your Bronzong can't be touched by the Groudon. Xerneas can't do very much either. Of course, you still have to be careful if you're Jake because you need to predict the, uh, protect the Kyogre in order to knock out the Groudon, because if Kyogre goes down, then my Bronzong is just, you know, not going to be doing very much. Right, and, you know, this isn't uh, Andy's. This isn't Andy's Groudon moveset. This is uh, Jake's Groudon's moveset, mm -hmm. right? So that's one thing that Andy actually gets an advantage in. He knows he the saw Groudon two and Pokemon. the Kyogre. Yeah. He saw two of the restricted Pokemon on Jake's side. Ditto playing a little scouting game right here, trying to get Andy exactly what he needs to know. It is, exactly. But now, like, I, I think all Jake has to do is protect Kyogre Trick Room. Um, and then you can... Oh, but he didn't protect the Kyogre. And now Zerny's going for a Geomancy here. I don't know how I feel about the Geomancy here. Oh boy, this could end badly for Andy. I think I'm actually really scared for Jake because Kyogre didn't protect. But perhaps he knows that uh, because his Groudon outsped the Groudon, he doesn't have to worry about a potential miss. Right, and we do see... Uh, actually, that would make sense, yeah. Ditto goes for the Precious Blades here. It is faster. It is faster. Does connect with the Kyogre. Huge press of his blades here, does pick up the KO, and now it's going to be Bronzong versus Groudon and Xerneas. So. Which is the one thing I said couldn't happen. I think if you're Jake there, you really should be protecting Kyogre, even if you think you're faster. Uh, then you can skill swap, and, you know, I guess then it's you're a little bit scared, right? Because uh, it comes down to who's faster between Groudon and Kyogre there. So Groudon actually was faster than Kyogre, picked up the knockout onto uh, the Ky Kyogre, and so now... You know, Ditto's just going to win against the Bronzong. So uh, Jake perhaps not knowing the speeds there and uh, was a little bit scared because if you skill swap the uh, grab, or like, excuse me, the levitate onto Kyogre, then Bronzong will be knocked down. Suddenly you can't knock out the uh, Xerneas. Can we go back like 10 turns? <laughs> what just happened? We saw Groudon use Thunder Wave to paralyze his own Salamence to win in Trick Room. Yep. That's just, awesome. That it is awesome. But <laughs> there was so much more that went on, too. The Precipice Blades miss until the Ditto was a big deal. And then uh, Jake actually... Jake, uh, uh, sorry, and... Yeah. Yeah, so that was such a huge, great set from both players, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
wow. I mean, I'm speechless. <laughs> like, whoa, what? I think Andy for me, there was so much going on there because it was like, wow, Andy has been playing perfectly. How is he going to lose this one? Wait, Trick Room ended. Wait, Jake's, everything on Jake's side is faster. But wait, Jake just lost both of his Pokemon and then Groudon just knocked Kyogre out. So the Ditto copying the Groudon and then dodging the Precipice Blades, I mean, all very clutch, but a, definitely a frustrating game because if you're Jake, you know you could have just won that if you protect Trick Room there at the end. And again, you know, Jake, the former top four in the World Championships last year in the Senior Seniors Division. Senior Division, yep. Andy Himes, who went undefeated in the 2014 the United States National Championships. This Andy's no stranger to this stage, and he's got the plays. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got the, got the plays. plays. He's willing to go to whatever end it takes to win, and he did that with that Thunder Wave. Uh, Jake is going to have to be a lot more careful. Mm -hmm. Thunder Wave ground on that. that I mean, that's a that's, it's not his fault, right? That's not yeah. something you can really prepare for, but you have to be able to adapt to that. However, I think this is a really fun throwback because Andy's leading with Kangaskhan Smeargle. That's actually what he used to get uh, undefeated in the 2014 National Back Championships. Then, yeah, I remember watching some of his battles, yep. and it was it was pretty hype, man. But uh, we do see the Kangaskhan and the Bronzong on Jake's end, and I actually think I like my position more if I'm Jake here because my Bronzong, if it has the Lumberry, can take a Dark Void from the Smeargle. It can also 2 KO the Kangaskhan most likely, and my own Kangaskhan obviously threatens smear goal if I can just low kick or double edge it or even power up punch it depending on how it is trained and then uh, the only scary thing here is the Kangaskhan mirror and whether you're expecting fake outs or dark boys uh, but no players are going to keep their inner focus here as it looks like they're just going to mega evolve. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting. They could possibly just trade fake outs here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a bit scary for the Smeargle if it's carrying the uh, Focus Sash. Uh, we do see the fake out now connect onto the Smeargle. Does a lot of damage right there. Probably going to be a fast uh, Smeargle without any bulk at all. As Kangaskhan on Andy's side goes for a fake out onto Bronzong. Both Pokemon are going to flinch, get a little bit of chip damage out on the field. Mm -hmm. I think right there, Jake ended up on top because he broke Smeargle's possible Focus Sash. Yeah, the only scary thing is if it's Choice Guard, if you don't know that, and it gets the evasion increase. That's about the last thing you'd want to see, maybe after a speed, but uh, if that Smeargle is indeed slower and doesn't have Choice Guard, then Kangaskhan on Jake's end might not be able to connect with that Smeargle, who could miss, and that's a big deal. The other question right now is who's carrying low kick, who's carrying power up punch, are you gonna target either as Kangaskhan? Because who's gonna get those boosts that we love so much to see, right? Yeah, I think one thing I wanna point out is that Jake's Kangaskhan has a little bit more HP than it normally has. 181 is the typical number, but we see 190, so most likely trained to maybe even survive a low kick from Kangaskhan. And would you see the spiky shield here from this mural? I probably would prefer to see that a bit earlier, probably in the first turn. As we do see Andy's Kangaskhan now gonna go for a power punch throwback to 2014. Just going for the power punch here, setting up his own Kangaskhan yep. to get ready to start sweeping uh, the rest of Jake's team. As Kangaskhan on Jake's side now goes for a return into the uh, Smeargle's Spiky Shield as Bronzong finally gets the setup trick room. Yeah, I'm not sure how much trick room really helps here though because Andy's Smeargle uh, is probably slower than that Kangaskhan. Moody's gonna give it a special attack increase. It's not gonna matter much. Defense drop, also probably not mattering much as the Smeargle is getting the evasion now in the beginning is a very big deal because uh, you know, chances are it might actually miss. Uh, I believe the Kangaskhan on Jake's side went for the fake out first and then Andy's went, but then that turn Kangaskhan's power punch from Andy's side went yes. for. So, so I'm so assuming they speed time. time. Yeah, uh, it's rare to see Kangaskhan's that are max speed, especially with that, Especially with that hit point number, right? Right, right. I mean, uh, occasionally you'll see Kangaskhan's that are admin as opposed to Jolly. Paul Chua actually won the Massachusetts Regional Championships, but here's another Hypnosis. And the dodge right there as Miro goes for a Dark Void, gonna go ahead and put Kangaskhan to sleep here. I believe, yes, it is going to put Kangaskhan to sleep. Is it going to connect on that Bronzong here? Does connect on that Bronzong, but is Bronzong carrying a berry? It is. It is right there. The berry to wake it up, and now Bronzong can go for another Hypnosis next turn, but that's really dangerous. That's a big dodge, too, as we're actually going to see a return onto a Bronzong, maybe expecting a switch out there onto the Kangaskhan. That did a lot of damage right there. It did, it did, but it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout. The Smeargle here is going to get another boost. It's going to be an attack increase. And a speed drop, <laughs> which could be fun potentially here. Actually, you know, it reduces Gyro Ball's damage. Uh, if you have Follow Me here, you might opt to go for Follow Me. Oh, I was kind of surprised to... Well, actually, you know, that made a lot of sense. I, Andy was risk... I mean, he was willing to risk the Hypnosis there. He got fortunate that it dodged because uh, if he hit there, it could have been a big deal. But Crafty Shield is yeah. actually a phenomenal solution to Hypnosis. Yeah, and, you know, Hypnosis outside of gravity is very, very risky. And the fact that Crafty Shield, you know, Andy's playing no risks whatsoever. As Kangaskhan goes for another power punch on Andy's side, gonna target on this Kangaskhan, gonna be able to pick up the KO. Unfortunately, only one hit, but hey, you just knocked out a Kangaskhan and you got an attack stage raise. And you're at plus three attack. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. We saw how much that uh, two stages of increased attack 
uh, return did to that bronze dog. Now it has a little bit more attacking power, as we do see some Smeargle boost from the Moody. Uh, gets an attack and an uh, evasion decrease, and now it is at only a plus one evasion. One thing that's interesting to note is that Andy the entire time has just been going, risking the speed ties. Of course, uh, Kangaskhan on Jakeson could have woken up there, but it didn't. Uh, instead of opting to play a little bit safer, maybe trying to sucker punch, he was decided to just go for an attack. And fortunately enough for him, he didn't have to deal with Kangaskhan waking up. But that could have been a big deal, because if Kangaskhan wakes up, it could do a lot of damage to either of your Pokemon. And Absolutely. if not, knock out the Smeargle, obviously. Absolutely. We do see Groundhog switching there right now, going to bring back the Sunlight. Uh, the sunlight's not going to matter too much. Of course, Andy uh, doesn't have anything to change the weather, so it's going to be pretty much under Jake's weather uh, until it comes down to Groudon versus Kyogre yeah. later on. The interesting thing here is because Smeargle got a speed decrease, it actually could be uh, faster than the Groudon outside or under Trick Room, so Smeargle might actually opt to just Dark Void here. Maybe you're willing to deal with a Hypnosis, as Andy looks very concentrated there. You know, he is one game away from making Day 2, whereas Jake, obviously, still in a pretty good position, but you want to really just lock up Day 2 as quickly as possible. We do see Groudon Protect right now, not going to want to take a possible Dark Void here. And we're going to have to see what Smeargle does. Smeargle goes for another Crafty Shield. Really worried about that Hypnosis right there. And I would be too. You know, a Hypnosis with like the really low accuracy move. But uh, Bronzon goes for a Gyro Ball instead here. Going to connect onto that Smeargle. Not going to... Oh, it does pick up the KO with the, the critical, critical hit. hit. That might have sure mattered, it, That might have mattered. Well, it did get a it speed gets a decrease. drop, yeah. yeah. As we do see Kangaskhan now go for a return in the ground. I'm not going to be able to hit it through the Protect at all. And how crazy would that be if Andy advances to 7-0 and because he paralyzes on sounds? Am I do you feel like I'm getting like hung up over that fact? No, I mean, it was amazing, <sighs> but it was also like, I felt like that was Jake's game to still win because, yeah, Andy had to make plays and uh, because, you know, the matchup wasn't exactly in his favor and then Jake still had the game one. I'm not sure if he just didn't see it or because he didn't uh, know the speeds, which right. is very fair since uh, there wasn't much information. But, uh, I mean, if you're Andy, you know you're so close. Your King is gone sitting at plus three attack, and you know you get up to Sucker Punch at that as well. We saw the return last turn, which was interesting because, of course, Groudon and Bronzon could just double up on your King is gone. So Andy uh, committed to that read. Fortunately, didn't have to deal with it being knocked out. We just saw Smear go faint, as we are going to see Andy now bring in his Groudon. That that is such an intense uh, uh like the King is that's so much pressure. It Smear is. Goal and King is gone has so much pressure that it exerts. Because, hey, guess what? Smeargle can put you to sleep. Kangaskhan can set up while you're sleeping. Yep. Oh my gosh. Now this Kangaskhan is at three stages of increased attack, ready to do some work. Bronzong's on the verge of getting knocked out. Groudon's not going to enjoy taking a return at three stages of increased attack at all. Oh, I mean, it's going to get knocked out. But the thing is, Bronzong's the fastest Pokemon. We finally do see a Sucker Punch, but it does fail. Hypnosis avoids, and we do see the Precipice Blades. But I'm kind of surprised we didn't see the Sucker Punch onto the Groudon, uh, because now Jake's Groudon is going to be able to return with the Precipice Blades of its own. Yeah, and that's going to be huge. Uh, Jay oh! Jake goes for the Sword Stance here, a move that a move that I really enjoy seeing on the ground because it deserves a lot more pressure as the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal. But at the same time, Kangaskhan is going to be exerting a lot of pressure. I fear that might have been a bit too late. Like you said, Kangaskhan does put on a lot of pressure. Now, one interesting thing to note is that Jake's Groudon, as we've seen, is faster than Andy's Groudon. So uh, it is the fastest Pokemon, or I guess faster than the opposing Groudon. But now we've got some mind games. Do you want to set up Trick Room again, maybe to outspeed or uh, you know, maybe switch out? Because uh, you know, you get, right now your Pokemon are both really, really low. Uh, Groudon and Bronzong are both obviously within KO range. Uh, one play that Andy can make is just target down Groudon with a Return or a Power Up Punch and then Fire Punch Bronzong. But one thing you always have to be careful for uh, is the Kyogre that's in the back. Yes, yes, definitely, Aaron. And uh, Jake just, he's, he has to find a way to crawl out of this right now. As Groudon on Jake's side does protect itself, it's... Kangaskhan has so much pressure here. Kangaskhan goes for the turn into the Groudon slot, not going to be able to pick the KO as Groudon on Andy's side goes for the Fire Punch here, targeting down at Bronzong's side, picks up the KO, and right now there's just one more Pokemon in the back, and is that going to be able to save Jake? I think it's going to be that Kyogre, right, since uh, the Kangaskhan fainted earlier on. Right. I think if you're Jake there, you need to commit to one of your two plays. I think now uh, it's just should be game here. I think it was a bit too late for that sort of dance. I would have rather just seen yeah. him on the offense. Yeah, agreed. Uh, because then you, if you get a critical hit, then you could actually knock out one of the threats. Uh, now, and the last one I do want to talk about as well, because Jake should have either, I think one of the good, better plays he could have made was switching Groudon out into Kyogre and maybe going for a Trick Room. Although, I guess you fear the return knockout onto the Groudon slot. Uh, so there, there wasn't much I guess he could have really done. Uh, he was kind of stuck in an awkward position. There. Kangaskhan just did so much work exerting pressure with that power punch. Makes you uh, think twice about switching. You're right, you know. If he did switch out that ground on, he loses those two turns of that sword stance. Yep. And he also loses his Kyogre probably. And we do see uh, Kangaskhan now connect with that return onto the ground on slot. 
on Jake's side, and Jake's Groudon gets knocked out. And now we see Groudon on Andy's side go for the Precipice Blades here. He's going to connect on that Kyogre. A full power Precipice Blades does not pick Ooh, up so the KO close. Kyogre with the critical hit as Kyogre goes for Origin Pulse as Kangaskhan avoids it. Unfortunate miss, but I think it's too late regardless. It does connect with the ground. is going to be able to pick up the one hit KO right there. And two Pokemon left. Kangaskhan, three stages. I don't think it matters what Andy has in back. Yeah, it looks like Andy's going to be able to take this 2-0 and advance into the day two of the national championships. I mean, Salamence in the back. That was the perfect Pokemon for Andy to have conserved. He played that really, really well. Of course, uh, Jake getting a little bit unlucky, but you can't rely to hit Hypnosis outside of gravity. It's 60% accuracy. It's so low. One of the downsides that I see in people using Bronzong is probably the fact that uh, it does have access to Hypnosis. Yeah. But in order for it to become accurate, and when I say accurate, I mean more accurate, right. I think it's still inaccurate, right. even with the gravity. It's. I do believe it's 100% once gravity goes up. I'm not exactly sure about that. It's, it's a really low percentage, man. Because I know Grass Whistle is just under 100.